Hey, what's up? Today I'm talking to you about the uh, Game Anywhere table by Transforming Designs. I am one of the earliest backers to receive their table from the second Kickstarter, so I wanted to make a video mostly for the backers who are already part of the campaign, uh, who have been looking forward to receiving their product and are wondering uh, what to expect. So I'm going to fill in some of those blanks specifically for the 6x4 uh, size table, the GAT64 mod, and uh, there's another gentleman who's already done a video on this product line, uh, which I believe he did his on the 5x4 variety, uh, the GAT54 mod. Uh, his name is Stephen Cooper. Uh, his video is going to be much better than mine. Uh, I'm going to link his stuff uh, on my YouTube page. I strongly recommend that you go look at his video. He goes into a lot of details that I'm not going to recover in this video because he's already done it and probably done it better. Uh, he put a great video together, so again, I strongly recommend that you go watch Stephen Cooper's stuff uh, if you want to get filled in a little bit more on the Game Anywhere table. Uh, so to cover this table specifically, I want to talk about uh, my first impressions. This is just sort of first impression videos. I just got it today, just unboxed it today, just put it together. Haven't even actually played a game on it yet. Uh, so again, just want to give people a heads up as to what I've experienced so far and talk a little bit about what I do and don't like about the table so far and hopefully that's helpful. Uh, so a little background information in case you're not a backer of the campaign. Uh, Transforming Designs is, I think, a fairly new company, or at least if they're not new, they're new to the Kickstarter world. And they put a campaign together a while ago uh, for a portable tabletop gaming table, which at the time uh, wasn't really a thing. And trust me, I looked. Uh, there's some other products coming to market now through some other companies, uh, but it's still not exactly a, uh, a blossoming market. So uh, it's it's there's not a lot of players on the field when it comes to I want a dedicated gaming table but I also want to be able to fold it up and put it away or take it somewhere. Um, so the reason why I personally had an interest in this just so you know where I'm coming from is uh, I mostly gamed upstairs on our kitchen table which is you know a nice big table uh, until my wife and I had our daughter uh, about two years ago and then gaming mostly became at least in when I had events at this house a after the kid goes to bed activity and I have a split level house it's a nice house nice star home but it sucks for noise levels so we go downstairs and uh, so putting a big table down here in a room that uh, we sometimes use for gaming sometimes use for things my wife does office functions sometimes use for guests to sleep in with my lovely game collection keeping them company overnight uh, we couldn't it wasn't really feasible to buy like a traditional dedicated gaming table and just plunk it down here and not really be able to move it or, or do anything with it when we didn't want to use this room as a, as a gaming function. Uh, so that was the main reason I wanted to get a portable gaming table. Uh, so this is from the second Kickstarter campaign, uh, the fulfillment of which is still in progress. Like I said, I'm on one of the first uh, to get my product uh, for that particular Kickstarter. Uh, this is the six foot by four foot model. There's also, a, I believe, a five foot by four foot model and a four foot by four foot model. Originally, uh, these were mostly just sort of folding tables specifically designed for gaming. And it, it's still at its heart a folding table, but they actually changed the design from the first Kickstarter to the second Kickstarter. They actually kind of did it in the middle Kickstarter. It was actually a little odd. Uh, but now they, we have the mod line, and uh, the mod line is designed a little bit differently. Uh, it's supposed to have this rail system that allows you to change the layouts of the tables if you want, if you have the proper accessories to do so, potentially put two tables together, so on and so forth. Uh, so there's a couple differences between those two designs, and that will come up a couple times as I talk about this table. So uh, let's go ahead and, and talk about this particular table, shall we? And uh, we'll start with the uh, pros and the cons. I'm actually a guy who likes to uh, start with the negatives and end on a high note. So let's go ahead and go into the cons. Uh, so like I said, table just showed up today, just unpacked it today, just put it together today. Uh, so let's start with the stuff uh, that I noticed pretty much almost as soon as I unpacked it. Uh, so uh, there was some damage in shipping, unfortunately. Now, how much of this blame we can lay at the, the manufacturer's feet is negligible, um, but I think there might be some logistics issues with shipping that they need to figure out still. 
Um, first thing that I noticed was uh, there are wheels on the underside of this thing that when it's all folded up, uh, you can roll it around. Uh, there's a set of four. Uh, one of the wheels unfortunately had busted off during shipping. Uh, I got part of the assembly right here. I may be able to reattach this. The uh, washer that holds it in place uh, was also in the package. I don't know if it's actually busted busted or if I can reassemble it. All the ball bearings, or at least most of the ball bearings are still there. So I might be able to reattach this, but this was busted off uh, <coughs> during shipping, unfortunately. So that is something to note. Uh, the other thing was the table came with this very nice carrying case. Now, uh, before I go too much into this, I just wanted to clarify something. I got this table, again, mostly because it wasn't feasible for me to have a dedicated gaming table down here that couldn't be put away. I'm not really planning on taking this thing anywhere. I don't plan on taking it to a friend's house. I don't plan on taking it to any conventions. So uh, there's a reason why I wanted to tell you that. But as it relates to this particular carrying case, it is a very nice carrying case. Yeah, it's got a separate pocket for all the wooden legs and rail components uh, and player stations. And uh, it, you know, it's, it's sturdy and it, it, you know, everything fits. Um, but I don't particularly care too much about it because I'm probably not going to use it much, uh, except maybe when I put it away sometimes. Um, but the caveat there is when this table is all folded up, like I said, it has a rail system uh, for the modular design, so you can add extra player stations and you know slide on these wooden pieces. Uh, when this thing's folded up and these wooden pieces and the player stations aren't on, you just have the exposed metal rail system, which at the corners has some uh, pretty pointy edges to it. So unfortunately, uh, when the table was packed into this, uh, this case, there wasn't any extra padding put on the rail system to protect the case itself from those pointy edges of uh, the rail system while it was being uh, shipped through FedEx. So uh, as you may or may not be able to see, some holes got poked in the sides of the bag. Uh, specifically where those pointy edges of the rail system uh, pushed against the edges of the bag. I think there's some down there too, uh, where the corners of the rail system did near the bottom. Um, so I personally don't care. I'm probably not going to bug uh, Transforming Designs about it much, but it's worth mentioning. Someone probably will care about that. I don't plan on using that case. And it's still functional. It still works. It's just it's got holes in it now. Um, the other thing, unfortunately, that happened during shipping is some of the accessories bit the dust. Uh, we have here the player pockets. All the accessories here are magnet, magnetized, so uh, you can actually stick them to the table. The table is a, uh, a uh, magnetic, I can always screw up the verbiage for this. It's not magnetized, you can stick magnets on it. I'm not sure what the actual word is for that. Uh, but all the accessories are pretty cool. You can uh, slap them on the table like that and they stay put. Uh, two of the player pockets that came with the table um, I think got bust up in shipping, as you can see. I don't think supposed. I don't think they're supposed to fold it in half, uh, or just be uh, all crumbled up like that. So uh, maybe uh, transforming designs can do something for me there. Um, the, another thing about the accessories was, uh, with my pledge level, I had just ordered two extra of these uh, player station borders and a manual holder, uh, neither of which I got. But I did get four large card, car, excuse me, four large card holders, and three small card holders, and these player pockets, a set of four or two of which unfortunately were busted, uh, which I didn't order. So I'm not sure how to feel about that. Obviously, I want the accessories I ordered. Um, you know, I'll contact Transforming Designs about that. Uh, I'm not sure uh, how that mix-up happened, but it's, it's worth mentioning that I didn't quite get exactly the accessories that uh, I had planned to get. Um, in terms of other shipping issues, if you go and you watch Stephen Cooper's video, um, he noted that uh, the legs were a little bit dinged up, just a little bit in some places. My legs look almost identical to his in terms of how much damage there is and the, and the nicks and the dents in them and everything. There are a few, uh, and like Stephen, I don't particularly care. I'll get a marker from Home Depot and address it, and uh, you know, I'll take care of it that way. Um, other than that, uh, I also noted that this thing is extremely heavy. The FedEx uh, tracking information said it was 130 pounds. I wouldn't be surprised if maybe this was a little bit more than that. Uh, so uh, getting it unboxed, carrying it down here, 
Uh, again, Stephen Cooper's video showed a great process for how to do that, kind of separate the components out. Um, but uh, again, I have the six by four version of this. Uh, Stephen's table is a little bit smaller than mine. Um, I'm not sure how heavy his was uh, or how his was all packed together. Um, but this, as soon as I was carrying it down and starting to assemble it, I was like, you know, this isn't necessarily actually a portable table. I guess technically it is. Technically, once you get everything uh, in this carrying case down here, uh, you can wheel it around. But if you need to carry it up some stairs or something, uh, as far as true portability goes, at least with a six by four size, I can't really, I can't really say that that's uh, actually factually uh, a correct statement. Um, but you can put it away. You can break it down and, and put it off to the side. Uh, which is primarily what I was worried about, which is why I mentioned that was what I was looking for in a gaming table uh, earlier. So, those were the shipping issues. Uh, a couple cons while I was putting the table together and after I got it assembled. So, uh, again, go watch Stephen Cooper's video. He shows you how to put the whole thing together. I skipped that whole part because he's already covered it better than I can. Um, but it's all put together here. But while I was putting the table together, up here on this end of the table, we'll say the north end, uh, both sides, the player station is attached to the rail system just fine, no issues. I was able to slide them right in. Uh, down here on the south side of the table, both these player stations wouldn't go on correctly. And the best way I can explain it to you without going into too much detail is uh, when I try to slot them into the rail system, you know, push them down and make them flush with the table, they wouldn't go completely down. They stayed up at an angle like this. Uh, so uh, I didn't think it was user error. It's possible it's user error, but I don't think so because I got those stations down just fine. I also took the stations off and put them back down to make sure I was doing it correctly. I swapped the stations around to make sure uh, it wasn't an issue with this station goes here and that station goes there. Uh, wound, the way I wound up fixing the issue myself uh, was I actually uh, lubricated the rail systems on both the player station and the table itself with some oil and uh, that allowed it to slide mostly into place but the thing was uh, still not the whole way it just whoops, case fell over uh, it just went together well enough that I could manually kind of hold both player stations in the position they're supposed to be in flush with the table long enough to put this side rail piece on uh, which goes over both of them in the center and that kind of held them in place uh, so that the table could be put together the way it was meant to be uh, put together. And uh, because of that, it's still not exactly assembled 100% the way it's supposed to be because those player stations aren't flush with the table. They're being held in place with that, by that rail. So uh, if you look closely, the wood's not exactly as flush and as well positioned as it's supposed to be because technically it's not really assembled right. And I think that's a, a manufacturing defect, honestly. Could be user error, but uh... hi again. Sorry, uh, my phone had some issues, so I'm gonna have to stitch this part back into the original video. Uh, there was some sort of storage or overheating issue with my phone, which is what I'm using to film this. Uh, so uh, I'll go and I'll edit this back into the original video. But I think uh, right where I left off, I was talking about the assembly issues with the player stations, uh, and I was saying it, you know could be user error, but again, I don't think so because I got those stations on fine. Um, I think there was an issue on this end of the table, the south end of the table specifically, with the rail system on the table being too wide on the inner corners, and um, that just prevented the player stations from going on properly. But like I said, uh, a little bit of oil uh, helped me, you know, at least get a, a half-ass fix on it, um, but obviously that's an issue. Uh, my last gripe, and unfortunately my biggest gripe with this table, uh, relates to its stability. Now, I was very concerned about stability uh, when I was checking into the first Kickstarter uh, for the Game Anywhere tables, and it was an issue that they mentioned and that they addressed uh, because it's terrible if you're gaming on a surface and it's a flimsy surface, somebody bumps into it, knocks over a cup of water or soda, it gets all over the cards and cardboard. It's not good. Uh, they did address it in the first Kickstarter. They demonstrated stability in the first uh, version of these tables, so I knew it was an issue they were aware of, and it was an issue that I expected them to uh, continue to address in, in future iterations of the designs. Uh, but unfortunately, when I tried this, tried out the stability of this table, um, as you can see, I'm just pushing with one finger here, and I swear I'm not, I'm not embellishing. I'm not trying to push harder and, and get away with 
actually pushing really hard and, and not letting you see how hard I'm pushing. I'm, I'm barely touching this thing. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's moving quite a bit, um, more than I would like. And if I'm sitting here, and I've got my elbows on the table, and I'm, you know, I'm gesturing, I'm putting the opponents down, uh, you know, the table is going to move. And is it moving enough to knock over components or knock over, uh, you know, glasses? Uh, you know, I'm not sure, but it is moving more than I would like. Uh, now, it is worth saying, at least with the cups of water and soda spilling over example, there are optional cup holder accessories which go into this outer uh, slide rail system, so the cup would actually be in a cup holder out here and you wouldn't have to worry about spilling. Uh, but still, uh, the table is just not as uh, not wiggly as I, as I would have liked. And that is honestly probably my greatest uh, disappointment. Um, now, to be fair, to be objective, uh, I, this is a portable table still, well, relatively portable, um, and this is a sort of a budget solution. You know, uh, this is not a $12,000 Sultan table. This is not even a $2,000 like entry level table, which is what you pay on most dedicated for most uh, dedicated gaming furniture. Uh, this is not even less, this is less than $1,000. I didn't even pay $1,000 for this. And it is a six foot by four foot table. Um, you know, it weighs 130 pounds, uh, so, you know, maybe just inevitably a portable design of a table this size is going to have some stability issues, but it is kind of weird what they did with the design here. I mean, the legs themselves are nice, sturdy, thick wood, um, but the legs are islands unto themselves. There are no diagonal supports as there would be uh, with uh, a more traditional folding table design, so, you know, Inevitably, there's going to be some shake, I feel, even if the table was smaller. Um, the original Game Anywhere table designs had some more DNA in common with uh, regular folding tables. I think they did have those diagonal supports, but this doesn't have that. So I feel like, you know, that's kind of an odd design choice because I feel like that's going to increase the shake. And I do have the, the legs nice and tight and sturdy and, and screwed in and everything. And I don't think it even relates to the other assembly issues I was having because even if you take the player stations off, it's still, it's still gonna shake like that. Um, but uh, let me segue into the pros. So as I said, the earlier designs had more in common with uh, regular folding table DNA. So you know, why the, while there might be some stability issues in this new design, the one thing that I do like about this new design is I like how this table looks. The original Game Anywhere table, as others have remarked, did just kind of look like a fancy folding table that you could play games on. This actually does look like a legit gaming table. This looks like a version of a dedicated gaming table that I've seen in other people's houses that they've spent way more money on. And unless you look too closely at this, you might not even realize that there's a difference. Um, you know, I got this four by six size to accommodate uh, larger games, which is a, a growing, growing trend in the board gaming world. I put the Rising Sun mat down here as an example to show how much room there is on this table. If you're not familiar with Rising Sun, there's all sorts of miniatures and player cards and coins and, 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 and other plastic tokens and stuff that goes all over the table. And this table has room for that and more. So, uh, you know, whatever game you want to play on here, you should have plenty of room to play. And I'm, I'm very happy with that. I'm also uh, happy with uh, a lot of the features, which again, referring back to Stephen Cooper's video, were covered there, um, probably much better than I could cover. The speed cloth, the quality of the wood, the stain, uh, the magnetic features, all that stuff Stephen Cooper talked about in his video, and I'm uh, happy with those things as well. Um, so overall, in conclusion, uh, I'm not sure, honestly, though, if I can recommend this table um, at this juncture. As I said, the, the stability of it is, is my biggest disappointment. I guess time will tell on how big of an issue that actually is once I get some gaming done on it. Um, but, you know, that, that honestly just kind of surprised me. I, I will say, though, that this is still a quality product. The market for portable gaming furniture uh, was non-existent two years ago, and it's still not very big now. Uh, if you're looking for a kind of a gaming, a dedicated gaming furniture solution that you can tear down or potentially take some places, your choices are very limited. And this is definitely a viable option, um, but uh, you know, again, it has, it does have its flaws. So you know, I would do your research. 
Um, I can't really directly compare it to anything else that's out there because I haven't got my hands on any of the other products from some of the other people that are making portable gaming table solutions. Um, but you know, this this is definitely viable. It's it's not a piece of crap. It's a nice piece of workmanship. It just it has some things that uh, I would like to see improved. And top of that list would be uh, the stability. But again, maybe at this price point and this size of a table, maybe it's unrealistic to expect that you're not going to get some shake. Who knows? Uh, again, I haven't really checked the other models. But uh, in conclusion, I hope that this helps the people who've already backed uh, this Kickstarter know what to expect, maybe what to look out for if you have some of the similar issues that I do. And for people who are shopping around, I hope this uh, helps you figure out what you know, it is you're looking at if you get one of these tables uh, versus some of the others. And uh, overall, I just uh, hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you have a good night. All right, see ya.